Let's head into the newscast with Cyclone Bulbul. Now, the death toll in Cyclone Bulbul, which hit the Bay of Bengal, has risen to four. The cyclone made a landfall between West Bengal and Bangladesh last night and weakened as it headed towards Bangladesh. The severe cyclonic storm hit West Bengal with a maximum sustained speed of 110 to 120 km per hour. Two deaths have been reported in Bangladesh. About 100,000 people have been evacuated from the low-lying coastal areas of Bangladesh. More than 3,000 shelters in 13 coastal districts have also been opened. Two ports have been put on their highest alert. Authorities have also cancelled a nationwide school test. Yesterday, heavy rains lashed the coasts of West Bengal and Odisha. In Kolkata, one man was killed when a tree uprooted and fell on him. In Odisha, one person died due to a wall collapse. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee said on Twitter that she will be taking an aerial survey of the affected areas around Namkhana and Bakali tomorrow. Later, she will also be reviewing relief and rehabilitation measures. She will be visiting North 24 Parganas region on the 13th of November. Ahead of the cyclone, over 50,000 people were evacuated from the coastal areas of West Bengal and around 4,000 were evacuated from the neighbouring state of Odisha. Light operations had been suspended in Kolkata since 6 p.m. last evening till 6 a.m. this morning. Several fishermen were provided with shelter and they were asked not to venture into the rough seas. Ten diving and medical teams were also kept ready by the Navy for rescue and relief efforts in Odisha and West Bengal. Odisha Special Relief Commissioner has said that around 30 to 40 percent of paddy crops cultivated on 6 lakh hectare of farmland in north coastal districts have suffered extensive damage due to the cyclone. Now, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that he reviewed the cyclone situation in parts of eastern India. He spoke to West Bengal Chief Minister and assured all possible assistance from the centre. Let's now have a look at the political deadlock in the Indian state of Maharashtra, which may come to an end soon as according to sources, the NCP is ready to lend support to the Shiv Sena to form a government. The final call will be taken in a day or two. It is believed that the deal between NCP Chief Sharad Pawar and Shiv Sena Supremo Uddhav Thakre has almost been finalized. Sources say that the Congress party will lend outside support to the alliance. The final decision, however, will be taken by Congress High Command. This comes as the governor has invited the BJP, the single largest party in the Maharashtra Assembly, to make a decision regarding government formation. Meanwhile, Shiv Sena has said that it is ready to take support from the Congress. The majority mark in Maharashtra is 144. Shiv Sena, which won 56 seats, has got the support of seven independents. With NCP's 54 seats and Congress's 44, the tally of the alliance will reach 162, easily crossing the majority mark. And staying with news from India, India's Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Goyal will be heading to the United States for a three-day visit on November 12th. He is expected to hold talks with United States Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer on November 13th. India and U.S. are likely to announce a small trade package after discussing pending issues. This package could pave the way for a larger trade pact between the two countries. Now, Goyal will also hold a high-level industry interaction with business and industry representatives in New York on November 14th. A day before his visit to the U.S., Goyal will be attending the BRICS trade ministers meet in Brazil. This is Piyush Goyal's second visit to the United States in the last two months. Trade tensions between India and U.S. have been on the rise since President Donald Trump revoked India's preferential trade privileges, after which India also imposed tariffs on 28 U.S. goods. A quick look at India's neighbour Sri Lanka and a political row has erupted in Sri Lanka over presidential candidate Gotabaya Rajapaksa's nationality. This after US Federal Register report did not include his name in the list of those who renounced US citizenship. The report has once again given way to speculations that Rajapaksa is an American and not a Sri Lankan. While the island nation allows dual citizenship, many claim that Rajapaksa is not a Sri Lankan citizen. 
Sri Lankan Sports Minister Hirin Fernando took a jibe at Rajapaksa calling him an American. However, the Rajapaksa family was quick to hit back. Kotabaya's nephew Namal Rajapaksa tweeted a document purportedly showing the presidential hopeful's loss of U.S. nationality. Namal Rajapaksa also tweeted pictures of what he said was Gotabaya's cancelled U.S. passport. He also said that the Election Commission has accepted Rajapaksa's nomination after verifying all the documents. However, Namal Rajapaksa's tweet has been unable to end the controversy. Opponents of the presidential hopeful are questioning his loyalty to Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, Gotabaya Rajapaksa will be holding a press conference on his nationality row today. The powerful Rajapaksa family is eyeing a comeback with the November 16 presidential polls. Remember, Gotabaya played a key role during the last stage of the Sri Lankan civil war under his brother Mahindra Rajapaksa's presidency.